Hey folks, Kevin here. Got another WebDriver I.O. video for you to check out. Um, this one is inspired by a blog post that I just read about data-driven tests using JavaScript and Mocha. And in the article, they talk about testing a function that tells you whether a number is prime or not, and how uh, in this test, you're going to end up kind of writing the same test again and again. So here they test two numbers, the number two and the number four and they expect one to be true, they expect the other to be false. But uh, one thing is that, you know, you call the is prime function, you get the actual, and you expect the actual to be some value. And you do the same thing in the next one. You call the is prime function, you get the actual, you expect the actual to be a value. So um, once you get to, um, basically they say, well, that's a decent set of tests, but it doesn't really test what happens, you know, it doesn't test multiple prime values. So Instead, you want to have um, like 10 different prime number or numbers that you want to test. And so you again, you have is prime, you call, you call is prime again, you call is prime again, you call is prime again. And it's a lot of repetition um, with your tests that mean that anytime you need to change like is prime or the way that you call is prime, you're going to have to update a whole bunch of different tests and it kind of creates a maintainability problem. So what they recommend doing is actually instead storing all your input numbers, all the numbers that you want to be testing in an array, and then call the for each method, which um, in JavaScript, anytime you create an array and assign it to a variable, that variable is going to have a for each method that you can um, use to say for each of the items inside of the array, then go ahead and run this function and that function is going to take the value of each of the items in the array. So the first time through, prime number is going to equal 2. So when they pass in prime number here, they're actually passing in 2. And then um, in this, um, it does that 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different times. Um, so we have six different tests, even though we're only writing a single test case, a single it statement. Um, so that has to do with the way that Mocha works. And Mocha works by uh, anytime you call it, uh, you pass in the name of the test that you want and the test code that you want to run. Um, and it will store that, um, store that to run uh, eventually or run when it um, runs. I guess that's the best way that I can put it. But um, we don't have to manually call it. We can actually call it multiple times um, through a loop. So that's basically what the for each is. It's a loop going saying, I'm going to run this function. I'm going to call it six different times with a different value to it. So um, it gives you a pretty good output. So now instead of having, um, let's scroll up a whole bunch of code that basically does the same thing. We had, we reduced that down to what seven lines of code. It's a lot better, but the the test name is still the same. So it's kind of tough if there is a failure. If one of the numbers fails, you don't really know which one. So then they talk about passing in the number um, as a message inside of your expect statement, which is pretty good. Um, it helps a little bit. Uh, you see number equals thirty three, but uh, it would be even better if we could do a custom test name. So here uh, they use uh, JavaScript um, template strings, which is just a backtick to start and uh, uh, start and end the string, and then that way you can pass in the property a little a little bit easier than the previous way of doing it, which is like quote plus property name plus quote plus the string. So it's just a little bit cleaner on. Um, so now we say given um, this property, we generate our our test name. And you can see the test name is a lot better than what it was before, yet you still only have one it statement. So that was the end of the post. I'll link to this post um, in the video description for you to check out later. But what I was thinking is, what if we want to try this, but not on a JavaScript function? What if we want to try this on a um, on a WebDriver I/O test, on a functional test? So. I was trying to think of what would be a good example of that. And I came up with passwords, like testing a password validator input. Because what we're going to have is like six different passwords that we want to test. 
and some of them are going to meet some of the validation and some of them won't. So here I have this password input field and it needs to check four different things that it's going to be that the password's at least eight characters long. So if I type in short, um, you see this error message still shows because it's just too short. So if I change that to not too short, you see that error message is now gone. But uh, I do have an, uh, it says it has to contain an uppercase letter. So let's change that to uh, capital N. Now I only have one error message left. And I'll press um, zero instead of O. And now my password is valid and I get a nice little, little green box. So let's see what it's like to actually test this. So the first thing I want to do is get those error messages and basically come up with a list of uh, passwords that I want to test. So I deleted that password so I can get the error messages back. I'm going to come over here to my text editor, paste those in, and now I'm going to go one by one and um, kind of create a password that is going to cause this error message to show. So in this case, must be at least eight characters. Well, that was short. And then um, must contain a lowercase letter. That is going to be no lowercase. So that will, this is long enough to not cause the eight characters long, but it will cause the lowercase letter to show. And then must contain a uh, uppercase letter. That's going to be not too short. Must contain a number or special character. Um, that case, we are gonna contain a lowercase uh, and an uppercase letter. So we'll just change uh, the N to a capital N. And that's gonna cause this error message to show. Um, and then finally, we want like a, a couple valid use cases. So not with our um, too short. Here we have uh, zeros instead of O's. And then we want to try it without numbers, but special characters instead. So I'll do a capital uh, S um, and then a exclamation mark for a special character. So I can paste that in there. You see it also passes. So these are going to be the uh, different uh, inputs that we're going to try to test on. So for the next part, I want to go ahead and convert this to actual JavaScript code. Um, and I've set up a folder that has, um, it's just a WebDriver IO folder. It's got WebDriver IO installed. I've got my configuration file. And then I have a test file with a, a test, um, sorry, test folder with a test file in there. So let's go ahead and open that up. Okay, so now we have our test file open. I'm gonna go ahead and paste over the um, different data that we want. And I, I can go ahead and close this because we're not gonna use it anymore. And I need to format this into a um, JavaScript array. Like we saw in the blog post, they provide their um, data in the form of an array and we're gonna do the same thing. So I'm gonna declare a new constant and I'm gonna call it inputs. And then it's gonna be an array. And it's not going to contain just single values. Um, here they just contain single numbers as values. It's actually gonna contain a set of objects and that's because we have an error message that we wanna assert against and then the value that we wanna do the um, test on. So for the first item, we're gonna copy over that uh, value. So this is the uh, password that we're gonna test short and then this is the expected error that we're going to get um, or that we're going to assert exists on the um, on the page at that time so i'm going to come in and just paste that down and i'll uh, fill this out okay so now i have the four um, inputs with their expected error and i'm left with the two inputs that are going to be valid. So for these, um, I am going to put these into our inputs array, but all I'm going to do is define them as the value. And then uh, I'm not going to define an expected error because we don't expect an error on here. So um, with that, I now have my full array of objects that have a value, which is we're going to type in to the input field. And the expected error message, if there isn't an expected error message, we expect no error messages to exist whatsoever. So let's get to writing our test. We'll start off with a describe block and we're going to describe the password input validation. 
And then um, we are going to, at this point, loop through each of our inputs using that for each function. And inside of that uh, input, we're going to take, uh, we're going to accept the input. Sorry, inside of that function, we're going to accept the input. That's what I meant to say. And that input is going to look like this. It's just going to be that um, object. So each time through, it's going to pass in the object that we can work off of. So the first thing we need to do is define a test name. So I'm going to say let test name. And I use let because we're going to change this in just a second. But uh, we're going to say input.value is going to be our test name. And uh, what we want to do is define whether the test name should tell us that uh, the test or the, the validation should show an error message or it shouldn't show an error message. So to do that, I'll scroll down just a little bit. Um, I'm going to say if input dot expected error. So this is saying um, if there is an expected error defined on this input value on this input object then we know we want to, um, in the test name, we're going to be checking for an error message. So I'll say test name plus equals, and I'll use that little back tick uh, because I'm going to want to pass in the expected error. So I'm going to say should show error, and then input dot expected error. Otherwise, if expected error isn't defined on our object, so for these two, it's not defined, then test name is just going to equal should pass validation. Okay, now that we have our test name, we can pass that into the it statement. And so with this, we're actually passing in a variable instead of a plain string, but that variable is just a string. So um, uh, Mocha kind of treats it exactly the same in that case. And then I'll add my function. And here's where I actually write the code for my test to run. So the first thing I'll do is go to browser.url and I'll just do dot slash. Um, the URL that I'm testing, which is going to be here, um, this page, this is defined in my configuration file. So I don't need to define it here. The next thing is I'm gonna do a little bit of um, browser.frame, a little bit of, I don't, I don't know what to call it. I just, I need to um, basically, because of the way this code pen is set up, this content is actually inside of an iframe. And then um, this uh, top bar is outside of it. So I need to move from the main page into the actual content of the iframe. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and inspect the page. Um, here's that iframe that I was talking about. It has an ID of result. So I'm going to use browser.frame. And into it, I'm going to pass my selector result. So I'm going to get the iframe. And then I need to use the value uh, returned from that. And so this is going to actually move the Selenium interest into that iframe. So that's what's going on there. Now I can actually get to uh, inputting my value. So I will do dollar sign and come back over here, I need to figure out how to select this input uh, value. So we could either do a name of password or a class of password. Um, let's go with name of password. So that's going to be an attribute selector. So that's using square brackets, name equals password. And then I'm going to set the value on that password to be input.value which matches what we've defined up here in our object that's being passed through. Okay, so we've set the value on our uh, input. Next up is to get the text of the error message, if there is any text. So I'm gonna do constant error message is equal to, and I need to get the selector for this error message. So this is just one big, um, oops. Up here, we've got a UL that contains all the different error messages. So I'm going to get a class of helper text. And I'm just going to call get text on my um, on this element, which is going to return all four error messages, any error messages inside of it. Um, you could be a little bit more specific by saying that uh, li with a class of length or, or um, 
kind of verifying it with a little bit more certainty. But for this example, all I want to do is just say I'm expecting this error message or whatever error message to exist inside of um, the error message box. Or maybe I don't expect it to exist. So what I'll do is first we'll handle the um, expected error scenario. So again, I'll do if input.expectedError. So this is going to basically be the same type of switch we're doing up here. And I'm going to expect the error message. And let's call that error messages, just to be a little bit clearer, to contain input.expectedError. So what this is going to do, it's going to look at the error messages string, and it's going to um, expect it to contain one of or the error message provided. So for not too short, we're going to expect it to contain this error message. And if it doesn't, it's going to fail the test. OK, next we're going to handle the situation in where um, we're actually not expecting an error. So we expect error, uh, error messages to just be completely blank. We don't want any error messages at all. So for that, we're going to do expect error messages to equal. And we'll just pass in an empty string. We're expecting it to not have anything at all. So that's how that's going to work. Um, there might be another chai assertion um, to check that it's blank or doesn't have any content in it. Um, I don't really want to look that up right now, so I'm just going to go with this. Okay, so this is basically what our test is going to look like. We have a single it statement or it function call, and uh, we pass in our test name as a variable, and we do our callback, and then we have our WebDriver IO, IO code here. I'm going to go ahead and save this. And again, we have this inputs for each that loops through each of these inputs and passes the information into them. So let's see if I did this correctly and run it in our test runner. So I'll just do npm test because I have that script set up and it's going to try and run. There's our browser popping up. So there's short, no lowercase, not too short, not too short with a capital N, and our valid ones. So we have six passing tests with that, even though we only wrote one test case in general. We just added a little bit of uh, uh, conditional logic in there to do one or the other kind of thing based on whether uh, expected error is provided on the input. And uh, we have six passing tests. And so that's how that works. And um, if you want to try this out on your own, I've actually got this available on, uh, you can actually run this on my try.learnwebdriver.io. I just got to paste in the URL up here. And if I actually run the test up here, it's actually going to pass and everything. So I'm going to just get the URL that I'm going to share at the bottom of this um, video so that you can check it out and try it yourself. So that is how to use arrays and uh, the for each loop to create kind of dynamic tests based off of specific sets of data um, and makes it a little bit easier to be more maintainable with your test writing and to um, kind of write tests a little bit faster. Because if I wanted to add another value here to test, all I got to do is pass it in there. Um, and it's uh, it works right away. And I get a new test right away. I don't have to copy all of this code and do all that kind of stuff. So you actually see uh, all six tests passed here. Um, and then my error messages or my uh, test names are pretty good. Short should show error, not lowercase, not too short. Special should pass. And then we even have the error message that it should show. So if there is a failure, we kind of know exactly what failed. So anyway, that's, that's it. Uh, thanks for watching. And let me know if you have any ideas for future episodes. I'm always looking for ideas. And keep on testing.